start in this industry at such a young age? Have you always known that you wanted to be a creative and a storyteller? Has anything surprised you mm. about this journey? Yeah, I um, it's so funny because I really fell into acting as a child. Like it just sort of, it literally came to me um, because my brother wanted to be an actor and my mom just my mom was like, if you say that's what you want to do, like, I'm going to support you. And she took me and my brother, uh, my two older brothers, because she's like, if I'm, she's like, if one of them wants to do it, I'm never going to hear the end of it. They're all going to want to do it. So she took me to audition. And that was the day that I like signed with my manager. And I've been with him for now 21 years. And uh, so it's never really like, it never really just like I decided that I wanted to do it one day. And over the years, there's been many moments, especially around like, you know, 18, 18 to 21, where I was like, do I actually want to do this? Or is this just what I've always done? Um, and that what everybody's just told me that I'm good at, so I should just keep doing it. And uh, I had a lot of personal confusion around that time. And I think, I think it was just nervous that maybe I was doing it because people had told me that I should do it, that I should continue it because it was just, I had already established a career. And I feel like that's, you know, 18 to 21 is around that age where you're trying to yeah. figure out like what you want to do as your career anyway. And what really, what I think I had trouble with was being like, it doesn't feel like a job that is going to change the world in a better way. And I always mm. had wanted to do something that was gonna be a positive effect on, on society. And then, and then I got really depressed <laughs> and I started watching so much TV and film and it really like, Anyone who's who's had um, who's struggled with mental health is probably familiar with the feeling of numbness you get. And after watching a lot of like really moving film and television, I was like, it, it felt like it taught me how to feel feelings again. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, there is there is a very important element to people who work in the entertainment as well. Yeah. Like there is always the world without entertainment is going is just like so bland. And people are so, and, and um, you know, then it kind of also led into, okay, well, there's also an element of like an important space for representation and like what yeah. it means to be, obviously I am, you know, a white, very like, very passable as gender conforming like woman. And, um, and so there's definitely an, a, you know, I'm still high on the privilege spectrum, but there is an element of like, okay, what does it mean to bring queer storylines to life? What does it mean to write nuanced stories about women, about yeah. people outside of the gender spectrum? Like, what does that, how does that also positively impact society? Because people feeling seen and represented is also like incredibly impactful. So um, I think that when I re had that realization was when I was like, oh no, this is also, this can also be an important job. I don't have to be, you know, as much as I would love to be working like as a, I don't know, somebody who's changing policies and, and things like that. It's also part of the way that we get to social changes through changing the, um, the uh, having a paradigm shift. Yeah. And media is, is also a very important part of that. So having that realization was when I was like, oh no, I do love doing this. It's not just like what I've always done. i been I think I just happened to be it just happened to find me at a very young age and I got very fortunate and it is actually like my life calling and it's what I want to do for you know as long as I should continue to get work it's what I want to do until I am old and and unable to work anymore <laughs> that's such a beautiful journey yeah like you're saying you know it just has that power to make people feel seen and thank you for sharing yeah. that when you look at your career as a whole, who or what has had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? Mm. Mm. It's interesting that you bring that up because 
you know, there's, there's so many things. My mom has had such an, a huge impact because my mom really like, she really gave up her mm. own personal career to facilitate, you know, being able to take me to auditions as a, as a kid and, and, um, and to help facilitate my career in, and I'm so grateful for her, like for her doing that and for allowing me to have this life that I'm now like so grateful to have. Um, and she's been, you know, she's always one of the first people I consult on, on business matters. Like as much as, as much as my manager, obviously, like he's, he are, is the person I consult <laughs> at the end of the day. But like, you know, my mom has been there for me in so many um, instances of like, I don't know what to do here. Um, so she's one of them, but there's been a lot of women along the way who have really like, really, really uh, influenced my process. And um, the first was when I was in this horror film called The Marsh and uh, Gabrielle Anwar, um, there's one specific moment I remember where she sat with me, the scene was very emotionally charged and she sat with me and talked through the scene and like, I feel like that was my first um, experience with method acting as the method acting in the way that I know it, where she was like teaching me how to draw on personal experience to, to channel the emotion that was needed in the scene. That stuck with me for a very long time. And then uh, the next, I feel like big, big turning point I had was when I worked with Helena Bonham Carter in this movie called The Young and Prodigious T.S. Vivid. And everyone on that was so incredibly talented. And working with the director was like such a dream. Um, but she specifically uh, had something that has stuck with me forever was, was the way that she tries to, every take has to be a little bit different mm. in order to keep it natural. Yeah, and that's that's been one of the greatest, um, you know, inspirations throughout my career uh, thus far. Until um, the next biggest one was working with Ari on this on uh, Pink Lady because they and so many of the cast, but um, I had predominant. I spent most of my time working with them. They commit so fully, mm. and. I was so, the, one of the first days we were working together was this, this scene in episode three where it's like the beep boop alien scene. And they just like, just like went for it so hard. And I remember genuinely like my, I was just like, holy shit. I am, I've never seen someone just absolutely go for it the way that they did. And I was like, that that really inspired me for the rest of filming to just be like oh mm. you just gotta like throw yourself into it and you can't be worried about like what you look like or if you think you feel stupid or you just gotta do it because it's gonna if you do if you just go for it it's gonna be great so I took a lot from them I've found myself really touching on that experience a lot in the past year since mm. working um on that scene and and working with them in general like they're huge inspiration to me and I've told them that before but I don't know if I'm like, I, I hope they understand just how much I mean it. Like they're truly like so inspirational to me. They will. And that's a perfect segue to this next question. But, you know, you're one of the stars of Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies, and you've brought so many dynamic characters to life throughout your career. What was it about Lydia that resonated with you? Uh, I think because I've like met people like her in, <laughs> in drama class before. <laughs> You know, like I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure anyone who's taken a drama class has met people like her, or they are her. You know, um, so uh, instantly, I feel like I, I knew who she was. Um, but also, what I found so interesting about her is that I couldn't be less like her, like mm. in real life. And yeah. uh, you know, there were there were a couple different times throughout filming where we were all talking about like who is the most like their character, who is the least like their character, and many didn't. People were like, you couldn't be less like this woman, like in real life. Like she's just so not you. And I think that was really fun for me to explore because I'm used to playing people who are relatively similar to me. And when I get to mm. play someone who is just the complete opposite, it's like, 
well, this is fun. I just kind of get to lose myself for a little bit of time and like be in a different world, be in a different like universe. And uh, I really, really enjoyed that about the aspect of playing Lydia for sure. Yeah, and as part of your preparation for this role, you created a, a Pinterest board for Lydia. Yeah. What was on it? And is that typically how you prepare for different roles? This was the first time I'd actually done that. Um, and a lot of it, it was really, I'm actually gonna bring it up right now. It was, a, it was mostly a mood board um, and predominantly around like costuming. I was really, I really felt as yeah. though, you know, part of getting into character is so much around aesthetics. Like when you look, yeah. um, when you look the part, you kind of just sort of naturally fall into it. And so a lot of it revolved around, um, around costuming, but there was also just like, there's a lot of vintage photos in it that just really kind of evoked a certain feeling that I, that I liked. And a lot of them are like, it's a lot of like 1960s kind of beatnik type of vibe. I've also got a lot of photos here of like, um, uh, you know, quote unquote, lesbian couples in the 1950s. Um, you know, that was that ter the term lesbian was like not being thrown around really yeah. uh, the way that we do now. Um, but like, there's a lot of Audrey Hepburn and just photos like kind of like this where it's like mm. i don't know how to describe it's not really like a look so much as like an emotion that's evoked in that which is this like kind of rungy like counterculture type vibe and uh it did really help me like explore the world that lydia would live in like mm. where you know i remember being on tumblr as like a teenager yeah. And like the way that like that helped me kind of like form an identity in terms of like what was on my Tumblr page, you know, this is the aesthetic of person that I am. And uh, I found that that was very helpful with the Pinterest board for Lydia as well. You've also said in previous interviews that you weren't all that confident in your singing ability, but you told mm. for such a standout performance in episode five, especially. <laughs> How did you prepare for that musical number? What was it like getting to put your dance training back into practice? Yeah, it was uh, the singing aspect. I was, like, I can sing. I don't identify as a singer. You know, I don't feel as though I'm strong enough as, of a singer to really identify with it in terms of like professionally but I do enjoy singing and I can sing. Um, <laughs> and uh, training for that, I um, was working with a vocal coach like a lot, like quite frequently um, leading up to the recording. And I was so nervous, so, so nervous. Cause I was like, everybody working on this, you know, I'd found Ari's um, TikTok page beforehand. And I'm like, holy shit. So this is the kind, <laughs> this is the caliber this is the caliber of singer that I'm working with. And um, uh, <laughs> so I'm like, soup, that kind of freaked me out because I'm like, oh, I'm not that good. Like, I'm nowhere near that good. And uh, I was training a lot, doing a lot of vocal coaching beforehand. The dancing portion, I was like, yeah, whatever. I was like, that I'm like, I know I can handle it. I can do it. And I know we've got in incredibly talented choreographers. I'll be able to handle that. The singing, I was very nervous about. So I think I was doing like two, two or three coachings a week leading up to it for about a month. Um, Cause it came up really quickly when yeah. I booked the role, I, I, I thought I was going to get, you know, maybe some like background ensemble vocals, not like a whole ass song. Um, so I was like, Oh, I really got to jump into gear here. I really got to push myself. Um, which was, yeah, I was nerve wracking, but I'm really glad I did it. And I am super thrilled with the outcome for sure. Uh, but the actual production, like the, the, the number, we only had like two and a half dance rehearsals for. So it came wow. up really quick. Yeah. And uh, one thing I'm really impressed with is that although we were short on time, a lot of, uh, you know, it, with most rehearsals, it didn't compromise the quality of the, the numbers yeah. because everybody was just like in, we knew that we were so short on time that in those rehearsals, everyone is so focused and like lasered in on, on what we're working on that everybody just like really brought their A game. So that's not like in merely players as well as like all of the numbers throughout the, the, the season. So 
I am very glad with how it turned out. I'm like, ooh, ooh. Also the help of, you know, all of the audio, all of the audio engineers and like all the people who worked in the music department, like they really like made me sound the way that I sound. So I'm very grateful to, to them as well for making me look good. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite members throughout the series. You know, oh, really? Je Jennifer Morrison also directed that episode. Is the filming experience different when the person at the helm also has experience in front of the camera? What was that collaboration like? Absolutely. There's, you know, Jennifer is so organized. Like, she is just, like, such a stellar director. She came to set with this binder, the, like, color-coded binder of like shot lists uh, and just like notes that she had on scenes like she was on it and was such a joy to work with like I think most of the cast would say that she was one of their favorite to direct directors to work with just because she's one so lovely and two like just had a very very clear vision and came to the set every day like knew what she wanted knew how to get it and um is a very efficient director which I always really appreciate I've worked with other directors that have been actors as well. Um, I worked on a movie with Jay Baruchel and, and he directed it. And um, obviously I'm a little biased being an actor, but like I do really enjoy working with directors who have previously been in front of the camera because they know, I think there's an element of understanding the pressure of being in front of the camera, like the yeah. visual, you know, there's, if you're having a bad image, self-image day, like, I think every actor understands the feeling of coming to set on a day where you're like, Ooh, I hate the way I look today and I have to be on camera. And I also have to have them record it and have it play it back for, you know, for ages and ages and ages. So there's this understanding I think actors have about the vulnerability of being on camera. Mm -hmm. And um, there's just, yeah, working with Jennifer was, she's so talented and it's such a pleasure to work with and, and it just gives it to you straight like she's just like that's not right <laughs> or like <laughs> not so she doesn't say it in a mean way she's just like that is not I don't think that's the energy that we need for the scene or I don't think this is quite like the right tone um and I always appreciate someone who's not gonna like beat around the bush or try to baby mm -hmm. an actor um yeah. and uh and she really knew like how to push those boundaries and uh was just I, I got so lucky with the fact that that was the number like she was directing episode five and episode five was the the episode that my number was in like yeah. I just like oh I got so lucky I mean all the directors who work in there are incredible it's just like I it was also such a you know such a treat to have Jennifer direct that that number so I feel very grateful in the same vein <laughs> you've also directed a short in your career as mm -hmm. well, right? Have you found that that experience behind the cameras changed the way that you approach your work uh, on screen and vice versa? I think there's, um, you know, I think I have like a bit of a more awareness of like angling and, you know, I'm a little more in tune with directorial style. Like I feel mm. like I can, I'm a little more aware of, director's approaches to directing now um but I wouldn't say it's really changed the way I act on screen um I found that directing just kind of came so naturally having been directed for so many years that I was just like oh this just feels like this just feels like second nature in many ways because I'm so used to hearing these kinds of notes um I feel like I'm a little more aware of the camera now in a more technical sense mm -hmm. as an actor. Like, I feel yeah. like that was something I wasn't as conscious of pre-directing that now I'm like, oh, okay, this is why I'm like, I'm a little more conscious of like where the camera is um, and how I need to angle myself in order to get like the, in order for us to capture like the emotion that they, they need for the scene. But not too many changes, I don't think. Yeah, and, you know, you touched upon this a little bit earlier, but, you know, Lydia and Cynthia have had such a tumultuous relationship. They've had their ups and downs. What was it like collaborating with Ari as you brought that dynamic to life on the screen? Uh, it's funny because there's like an enemies to lover, the, like yeah. the enemies to lover storyline, <laughs> which I, I mean, I think I that's like, I'm a sucker for that trope. I love that trope. 
so I'm like happy to be part of it. Um, uh, collaborating with Ari was like, just was so easy. Like they're so easy to work with, mm-hmm. Un- like shockingly easy to work with. And um, I think we just kind of got each other from day one. And I feel as though we both really made an effort to uh, forge a good relationship with each other um, because we knew just how vulnerable we would have to be yeah. in scenes together. And um, I feel as though we put a good amount of effort into building a relationship outside of work, which I'm, I think we're both proud of. Um, and also they're just like a wonderful person to, to, to be around all of the time, like just so sweet. They also, um, having someone else on the set who was, I mean, there was a few um, like gender non-conforming people on the set, but having someone who's specifically like trans and non-binary to like talk about the gender implications of like playing mm. a character that is a different gender than yourself, especially for Ari, who is, yeah. you know, trans mask and, and playing like a woman in um, in the 1950s too, when we didn't have verbiage around like uh around different pronouns and being able to outside of work like completely in a non-work related context like be able to talk about identity and um and just like the queer experience of actors on set you know was uh was really fulfilling and um just really brought us that much closer i think so I, uh, I, I have, I feel like I've tried to express to them, like my love and, and appreciation and like respect for them, but I don't always know if it's like fully, you know, translated, but I have so, so much appreciation for them. I can't even like, I couldn't even put it into words. There's so many fantastic musical numbers throughout the series, but what I've enjoyed most is that it's able to tackle so many universal themes, even though it's set Mm -hmm. in the 1950s. Was there one in particular that hit home for you? Um, oh man, I remember, so I wasn't in, I don't show up until episode three. And I remember when I got all of the songs for like the entire season, like they sent all the demos. And before I had even started filming, I got, I listened to the entire discography from like start Mm. to finish. Obviously some of those songs changed a little bit, you know, uh, along the way. But I remember the first time I listened to In the Club from episode two. And I was like, oh, this is what we're going for. Because at that point, I didn't understand, like I'd read the pilot script. I'd read episodes actually one to three. And, um, you know, there's there's so much that you can get from a script, but it really depends the people who are directing, the people who are at the helm of it. And I really didn't know like, I really didn't know what tone they were going to go for. Like, I didn't know if it was going to be very CW network. I didn't know if it yeah. was going to be like gritty euphoria, E24 type of thing. Like, I really didn't know where it was going to be. And when I heard in the club where, you know, there's all, it's just a song about straight white privilege um, in a very fun way. Like it's a, it's a catchy song. And um and I remember hearing that and being like, oh, I'm so glad that this is the show that I'm a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, there's there's elements throughout the entire series where they tackle race and gender and yeah. um, and like World Without Boys. I love that song. It's great. Like, because, you know, all of those, I think that's episode two as well, where all the women, like all the socias and the pinks, they're all like pitted against each other. And yeah. then there's this, there's this dream sequence where like, oh no, we could all have been best friends in like in a world where the patriarchy wasn't pitting us against each other. Mm. And I love that. I love it that it's it's communicated in the music. I love that it's communicated like just in the scripts in the series. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say there's like really like one particular moment, but like I do like that there's songs that are, you know, people, I guess people would say politically charged, but they're, I think they go about it in a very lighthearted way in a way yeah. that's relatable. And um, that's the most important part is like, can we make, you know, make these relatable to everybody? Yeah. Um, and uh, there's so, I'm, I wish I could like come up with 
I'm still in a place of like only, <laughs> you know, thinking back to the first five episodes and like those are some pretty key moments. And even in Merely Players, like, you know, we we obviously it's a queer love story and like we touch on the, um, you know, the fantasies around like, I've imagined this for my life and I'm kind of scared of it. And there's there's so much important messaging throughout so much yeah. of the music and 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 storyline so like i'm just so thrilled that this is the version of greece that we are rebooting and like this yeah. is the version that i get to be a part of like that's crazy it's wild <laughs>